Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning. Here today to do Zonkyo no Terror, episode 8 review. Now, this episode, okay, well, I'm convinced that 12 is going to die. Because Lisa has turned out to be a huge liability. Huge. Massive. Planetary size liability. Not only were they able to find where they were located on the roof, I don't know how Five did it, but she did it. Found where they were, or found where she was, and then they mailed her a bomb. And then the top of the apartment blew up. But then, after hearing the words of 12 and 9 to each other about how. If you're scared, you're scared because of Lisa. And how you can't remember, or you can't forget, I should say, about that place, that institute. And in this sense, Lisa understands that she is, a, you know, like a liability. So she thinks that she's going to be able to lessen the burden on them by leaving. False. She increases the burden because she leaves. And then they track her. Like, apparently, it, it never went to her mind that, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't go off and do... Like, if I'm going to leave, maybe I should coordinate leaving with them. Because they're probably looking for me since they already mailed me a bum. Apparently, they never replied. So she leaves, and she's running around the middle of the night, and then in come the dudes in the black coats. So you're like, oh. And when that happens, of course, she gets sent right to Five, and then Five mocks her, and apparently she's on top of some kind of Ferris wheel now. I don't know, but the point here is that Lisa is a gigantic liability, and Twelve is now on his way to try and save her, and he may succeed, but the end result is, is either him getting captured or him getting killed. And apparently Nine wanted to enact some stage of the plan early on. Because they were going to save for later, but they didn't take into account that Five would be involved. So, because Five is involved, they're now going to rush with their plans, or they're bumping up the schedule. So now they're going to do this certain thing, if in fact Twelve survives, and he comes back to Nine. But... They're going, or I'm pretty sure Nine could do it on his own. But basically, something is going to happen, or something big that they were going to do that they were going to save for later, pretty much. So now we go over to Shibasaki. And Shibasaki, he's catching on. In essence, what they did in the episode, and the guy with him, I forgot what his name was, but this guy with him was actually turning out, turning out to be a good guy because Shibasaki and the others clearly, after the incident. Well, they were suspended without pay for like three months. Shibasaki was indefinitely. I'm like, oh, fucking what the hell? So, in essence, they're like, you know, fine. I'm going to do me. And we actually see him find out that when it comes to this institution, well, first of all, number one, orphans. Ah, you see, now, people clearly would notice if their kids are gone. But if they're orphans, now we're getting somewhere. And apparently it involves pharmaceutical, neuroscience institutes, and basically it involves institutes that have high prestige in the sciences and the mathematics and so on and so forth. The neuroscience part being the very key one because these orphans were tested to see if they were gifted, if they were, like, geniuses. And once they were confirmed to be geniuses, they were taken by this organization, or the government, if you would. And the people never heard from them ever again. Where in which we probably assume that the Rising Peace Academy is a front for this institution for gifted orphans who are probably getting neurological and, yeah, they're probably getting experimented upon to see if they can enha like enhance their brain activity and so on and so forth. Which is probably the reason why 
you have nine and five having headaches. Now five, she had like a massive headache. And then she was sweating like crazy. And then, well, not like crazy, but she was sweating. And she said to herself, not good. So because you're increasing the brain activity to a certain degree, this may shorten her lifespan, or I should say their lifespan, depending on the amount of experimentation went to that child specifically. So we're not too sure of the specifics, but we're getting closer. Shibasaki's getting real close. So, I'm liking this. Like, the moment he is kicked off the force, he makes huge strides into what is actually going on. He even, in a sense, coerced a politician of some Democratic Party, uh, Ichiro, I forgot his name, his uh, the last name, or I, I think the whatever, I don't know, because Japan, their names are flipped, but whatever. The point here is that he coerced him and showed him a picture of his son taking a few uh, drugs, some uh, narcotics. And he's like, yeah, so he's not doing so hot. All right? I mean, the, the issue was resolved before, but now, not exactly doing so hot. So, it is what it is. You, get, you gotta do what you gotta do in order to save lives. That's the way I see it. And Shibasaki's clearly doing that. In fact, I'm kind of pissed at the fucking other dude, because the dude who fired him is uh, higher up. I'm like, bro, listen to your fucking detectives. They save lives. But no, of course not. Oh, no. Well, you know, because, you know, America. America's here. We got to listen to America. The ISA. The Intelligence Service Agency or something, whatever. Pretty much Intel guys in the United States. That's what it is. So, the point here is that, number one, five is making strides when it comes to getting 12 and nine. We find out that the guy who's with... Five. I've got his name. Apparently, he can only hold back the Japanese government for so long. Or I should say the Japanese police for so long. Because the police, they're seeing the bombings. And it's like, okay, so we're on the sidelines for now. But they can only go so far. Because we are the defenders of the citizen. That's our job. To protect those in need. That's what we're paid. That's why we have fucking taxes. So point here is we can't let you run roughshod forever. It's not happening. And Shibasaki and the others are a clear example of that. They found out that something was amiss and they said, you know what, we're gonna take we're gonna take matters into our own hands. And I got a feeling that one of the key things here would actually be the exposing of the ISA and a five and the America's involvement. Where if in fact it is revealed to the Japanese populace that a five and the ISA were the ones who were actually the ones who put the bomb in the airplane. Ho ho. Oh ho ho. Then you got a big fucking problem. So, because then you lose the favor of the populace completely. And once that happens, you can no longer coordinate these type of maneuvers effectively. It's not possible. So, the point here I'm trying to make is that this episode is. It makes strides and story progression, but at the same time, it does have the build-up. It, it almost as if like it's set up. Yeah, like set up because it's set up for something really big. I mean, Lisa being captured is big in of itself, but now we're going bigger because 12, 12's involvement and nine at this point in time doesn't seem to be in. He doesn't seem to want twelve to. Well, first of all, no. Let me we are, let me change that around. Nine isn't taking part, period. Nine's not going with 12. So, at least for now. Maybe you will, in the near future, maybe you'll follow 12. But right now, Nine's just back at their sub-headquarters. So, if 12 gets caught or if he's killed... Now, this actually may motivate Lisa in some way, shape, or form. Because Lisa... She may understand full well that, you know, I was a liability and 12 died because of me. So now I'm going to go hardcore. Like, and that may, because, you know what? I mean, that may be possible, too. Like, she says, she says you know what? No. Fuck this bitch five. I'm going to kill her by any means necessary. So, again, very possible. But we'll see how it rolls out. Uh, that does seem to be a little bit more on the far-fetched side of things. But it's not impossible. Because Lisa... 
I think Elise is actually a very intelligent woman, or girl, I should say. It's just that she lacks motivation, she lacks education, she lacks these things that 9 and 5 and 12 clearly had when they were in that institute. So if she could somehow make up for that, she'd be a devastating threat. But then again, that's my take on her as a character. She has a lot of potential, but because of environmental, because of psychological factors, her potential is squandered away. That's my take. So, overall, the episode. The animation, of course, as usual, is just fantastic. There's no doubt about it. The pacing, they clearly did cover a lot of the material that is quintessential for the setup of what's going to happen, obviously. And I do think that when it came to the... Because it's not fully explained as to how Five is able to find Lisa initially. But I guess we didn't really need that. Because we had to move on anyway. So the pacing is... It's... A little bit fast. It's not overly fast. It's a tad bit fast because they did skip some parts. Like, they showed you A and B, but they didn't really show you that much of how they got from A and B. They show you a few parts here and there, but that's it. So, the pacing is fast, but not, like, really, really fast. Then we have the story progression, obviously, which is, again, huge in the fact that Chiwasaki, there's some guy called Ayato, um, Ayato, um, <laughs> he, uh, I, or Aoki, something like that, yeah, yeah, like, there's some guy called Aoki, who they're trying to get intel on right now, and his whole connection with the Rising Peace Academy, and so on and so forth, and the missing kids, and so on and so forth, and then, you have, again, Lisa, she's being captured, and what happens now, I'm, I'm assuming that 12 is gonna be caught, or be killed, if 9 doesn't get involved, because 9 has another plan to initiate, because, again, they had a plan that they were going to do in the distant future, but they're doing it now. And then you have Shibasaki actually talk to his daughter about plutonium and if you can make a bomb on plutonium. So the end goal of 9 and 12 of Sphinx may actually be to blow up this facility and say, fuck it, we're going to blow shit up with plutonium. Like, make a fucking statement. Like, yeah. Okay, who knows? But that's it, pretty much. So overall, the episode, I think, is a good episode. And I will see you guys later. So, King Lion, rate the video, comment, subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice day.